So now that we've gone through the mechanism of imates, how do we use them? Very commonly, what you're going to be using imates for is something in synthesis called reductive, anim am reductive amination. And to explain reductive amination, we've already seen the first half. Reductive amination, the first part, is just replacing a C double bond O with a C double bond N through the mechanism we just learned. That's the first part. The second part is the reductive part of amination, because we've aminated the carbons, we've added an amine, or more specifically an imine. But what's the reductive part? Well, the next thing over the arrow, there are one of two ways, or there are two ways to write it. Either you'll see L I B H three C N, or you can see N A B H three N. Either way, whenever you see these two, one of these two, you know what you're doing. In general, the only time you see these reactions is in the context of a C double bond N, and all it does is turn that C double bond N into C single bond N by adding a hydrogen to either end of that double bond. Meaning, we go from the imine to just a regular amine. Okay. So both the nitrogen and the carbon will get a hydrogen, making it a single bond, okay? So that's the general idea of reductive amination. Now, how do we use it in synthesis? Well, our go-to method of connecting carbons that have nitrogens is this process. So for example, let's say we have some carbon chain like this. Let's say we're told to synthesize this from four carbons or less. Well, reductive amination is how you're going to do it. Now remember, we're going backwards. So when I had written it out going forwards, the second step, or the last step to get me to the single bond N, was that NABH3CN, or the LIBH3CN. And all that does is put a carbon-nitrogen double bond. Now, I want to put the carbon-nitrogen double bond on the side that would have the easier place to cut, or more carbons to cut. So I want to put it on the left. And so I'm going to put that double bond there. Okay? And now, going backwards again, I want to separate carbons. How do I do this? Well, remember, the C double bond N is made from a C double bond O. So all I have to do is erase the nitrogen and its methyl and put an oxygen there. So I have one, two, three, double bond O. What has to be over the arrow? The nitrogen with its methyl. And how many hydrogens should be on that nitrogen? Remember, things want to be neutral and nitrogen um, to be neutral needs three bonds, so it's supposed to be NH2. Okay? So, going forward, how does this work? Nitrogen replaces the oxygen and loses two hydrogens. So I get N-methyl and a double bond. And then NABH3CN will turn this into a single bond. Okay? So, in general, whenever you see a carbon-nitrogen bond and you're trying to do it in a synthesis and break it apart, do this method. So, let's do a couple examples. Let's say I want to make, well, actually, let's, go, let's do another example going forward, because one of, the most common one of the most common kinds of questions you're going to see is something akin to this. Let's say I have a double bond O here, and then a carbon chain like this. And then over the arrow, they tell you Na, pH 3, Cn, and pH of about 6. So for the record, pH, sometimes you're going to see with NADH 3, Cn, a pH of about 6 or about 5. That just means you're in acid conditions. You have H+. And sometimes they'll just leave it out, but you don't really have to worry. It doesn't really change what happens as far as you're concerned. So what is going to happen? What should be my major product? Well, let's first start by looking at what's over the arrow, NADH3CN. Now, we said the only time you're really going to see that is if you're dealing with C double bond N. 
but we look at the structure and there's no C double bond N. So what are we doing? Well, most likely their intention is for you to make a C double bond N some, at some point in the reaction. And now if we think about things, we see a C double bond O and a nitrogen in the same structure. And we know that C double bond O and nitrogen will react together to make C double bond N. So what most likely will happen is this nitrogen is going to react with that carbonyl. Now, there's a fast way of doing this, and then we'll do the mechanism way of doing this. The fast way is to say, well, we know that the nitrogen likes to attack the carbon of the carbonyl. So I'm going to number that nitrogen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Based on that numbering, if this nitrogen is attacking here, I must be making a five-membered ring. So I can just instantly, if I'm not worried about the mechanism, I have this, and now, Five and four were here and here. Those are part, or those are part of the five-membered ring, so they're not going anywhere. But now we're kind of just sticking one, closing a circle onto five. So I have four connected to three, three connected to two, two was connected to one, which was our nitrogen, and nitrogen got connected to five. And there's the five-member ring I expect. Now I just need to make sure the right number of hydrogens are attached, but we said when nitrogen attacks, it loses two hydrogens and forms a double bond. Where should that double bond form? Form on the carbon that had the C double bond O, which means there should be a double bond here. This would be my product before I use NADH3CN. Be careful of that. Remember, this will happen, but you're not finished with this. NADH3CN will finish the reaction by reducing that into a single bond by adding hydrogens to either end of the double bond. Okay, so here's three, two, one. Now let's actually draw out the mechanism to see why we should expect that as our final product. So it goes back to that I mean mechanism again. Nitrogen, that one here, that will target the carbon of a carbonyl and force those electrons up. And in that one arrow, we form that five-membered ring. We have a couple extra steps we have to worry about, but we should expect to form the five-membered ring. And again, if you're not sure, if you see you're forming a ring by having a molecule attack itself, number it in this way. Number the carbon or the nitrogen or whatever is doing the attack, one, and count your carbons along the chain until you reach the point that's being attacked. And that will tell you how large your ring is going to be. Since I'm making a five-membered ring, I can just draw a five-membered ring. Okay? So I'm just going to draw a regular old five-membered ring. Now let's see my numbering. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, we know that 4 and 5 were part of the ring, so this should be 4 and this should still be 5. Now I just have to add in the rest of the numbers. 5 was connected to 1 by that attack, so 1 must be over here. And then we have 2 and 3 just by counting. Now I just have to fill in the blanks. What should be connected where? Carbon 5 had an oxygen, but that oxygen swung up, so now it's O minus. Carbon 1 wasn't actually a carbon, it was nitrogen, and that nitrogen had two hydrogens on it. When a hydrogen has four bonds like this, it is positive. And then that's it. Those were the only two things sticking off, or that were special. And then we saw what happens is O minus will deprotonate the nitrogen, push those electrons on, or, or push those electrons onto the nitrogen to neutralize it, giving you giving you OH, NH. So both are neutral now, but we know what we expect. We want to kick out the water, make a carbon-nitrogen double bond. So one more time, that, water, that oxygen will grab another hydrogen, push the electrons onto the nitrogen, so you get now one five-membered ring, the other five-membered ring, with that nitrogen now being negative. And on the carbon, we have H2O positive. So now finally, to form that double bond and take the water out, the nitrogen's electrons swing down, and the water group leaves, giving you the final product, well, almost the final product, right? We have the double bond there. But then NADH3CN will react on that, reduce the carbon-nitrogen double bond, which was what we wanted, and turn it into a single bond. So this would be the final product of this reaction. So you should be able to do reductive deamination going forward. This is a very common part two question. And now try a synthesis problem. 
where we have to go backwards. So our running joke in the course is we teach you how to make a mat, because why not? Um, and so we say, we have our benzene, we have this, we have our nitrogen, and we have a methyl on that. Okay? Synthesize that from any, car any uh, compound containing four carbons or less. Okay? Now let me check the timer real quick. Okay. So, so, let's start with the nitrogen. Just like before, we said we want to make a carbon-nitrogen bond, right? Carbon-nitrogen or carbon-nitrogen. Now, ideally, you want to cut where there, you can get the most carbons off as possible, so you probably want to cut this bond here. How do I do that? Well, going backwards, we can have step one. Well, before I even do that, if I want to cut things off, cut that nitrogen off, and I want to go back to the very first thing before I add the nitrogen, before I reduce, we know we need a double bond O somewhere. And that double bond O will be on the carbon that is currently connected to the nitrogen. So if my goal is to cut this bond here, well, here's the nitrogen, here must be the carbon, and that carbon must be where the double bond O is. And so we should have, this is our reactant. What needs to be over our arrow? Step one, the amine group that attacked, since we have nitrogen with a CH3 on it, it should be NCH3. And then I have to add two hydrogens, right? Because we want a nitrogen with three bonds, so it's neutral, NH2, CH3, three bonds. That's step one. And step two, this alone would only give us a C double bond N. We want C single bond N. So step, step two will be NABH3CN. Now you're allowed to do these two steps, the steps drawn out separately with separate intermediates, but you're also allowed to do them together like this, step one, step two. And sometimes you'll see them on exams written together like this, so I want you to get accustomed to it. And from here, it's just good old addition to the benzene. So we need to cut this carbon ideally off of the benzene. It's a little too far away, so let's work with the carbonyl for now. Carbonyls we can't cut with, but we can cut with OHs. There's a reaction that turns an OH into a carbonyl, and that is PCC. PCC turns an OH into a carbonyl, so I draw my OH there. Now I want to cut carbons because I have that OH. Let's cut on the side with the fewest, or that will get more carbons off. So over my arrow, I need step two, H plus or H2O or proton source, whatever. And now on my reactant side, I'm going to just redraw what I started with. Okay. Benzene, like that, okay, and I have my two car my three carbons and my OH, and now I have to figure out the pieces that this should look like. I just redrew it, but this isn't what should be here, okay? The two things that come together when we're going back, uh, that when we're going forwards is something with a lithium and something with a C double bond O. Now our goal was to erase this bond, so I'm going to start by just erasing that. Now, I said something needs a C double bond O. What should have the C double bond O? probably the carbon that has the oxygen on it at the end. So just draw a double bond O and erase your hydrogen. Okay, so that's one piece. And then the other piece will have a lithium on it. So these two pieces, and then step two H2O, will come together to make this. Now we need to do this again because we want to start from benzene, not a, car not a benzene with a carbon and a lithium. There's only one reaction that ends with lithium, and that's lithium over the arrow, which converts a bromine into a lithium. So, now we have Br. Now we need to convert that bromine into an OH again, because we want OH. OH is our main way of cutting carbons apart when we have oxygens involved. So, HBr, or PBr3. Both would work. Now we have and OH here, and we can do exactly what we did right here. Over your arrow, draw, say, step two, H2O, and now redraw what you started with, a benzene ring with a carbon and an OH. Which bond did we want to break? The bond that's a single bond away from the carbon of the OH right there. 
So erase that bond here. The carbon with the OH becomes C double bond O, and the carbon that didn't have the OH becomes lithium. And now we're almost done because we just need to turn this into, into benzene. Lithium over the arrow will turn that lithium again into a bromine. And now we have a way of adding bromine to benzene by doing Br2 in FeBr3. And that's your synthesis.